Welcome everyone to Overcome Podcast. Uh, very special episode today because uh, this guy is getting a lot of attention uh, on on Twitter. Even The Rock has been retweeting him uh, and his transformation. <laughs> so it's a really pleasure to have uh, Dave Kennedy here on the show. Thank you, Dave, for joining. Yeah, it's such an honor to be here and I really appreciate it. Look forward to it. Dave, um, well, we have a, a lot of things in common. We work uh, information security, and that's how uh, I I, kn I knew you in the past when you were uh, overweight, and 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 now you are, you know, a, an example of uh, a fitness transformation and, and fitness enthusiastic with uh, we hack uh, health uh, podcasts and all the community following and a lot of people are changing because of that but let's let's go back to the real beginning because in every transformation story there is always those triggers that what re did really trigger you to change yeah it's uh you know if you look at the kind of the history of my life i've always struggled with weight uh, ever since i was a kid um you know i think as soon as i hit like eight or nine years old, uh, I just started kind of skyrocketing in weight uh, and continue to, you know, pound, you know, put on weight as I was going through middle school. And I was especially heavy set in high school. And um, I remember um, I was signing up to go into the military and uh, there's no way that I could pass what they call the PFT or the physical fitness mm -hmm. test. I was just so out of shape and I was overweight and couldn't do any of that. So I had to do like um, a lot of uh, extra work beforehand just to get and join. And I ended up joining the Marines because I was like, hey, the Marines are you know, these, these, you know, super, you know, tough, uh, really athletic uh, type of folks. I kind of want to be part of that and want to figure out how to get my weight under control as well as, you know, what my future and career looks like. And I uh, joined the Intel community uh, on the Marine side. And uh, so I joined the Marines and I had to stay an extra three months in boot camp uh, just to uh, uh, get in shape to be able to pass the test. So I stayed at boot camp for six months, whereas most people going for three, which really sucks, by the way, because like you know, <laughs> six months in boot camp is not fun. <laughs> it's it's not great. Um, but uh, you know what was interesting about the military is that it had put me into this structured format of you know you have to wake up every morning and you have to go out and do things. You have to eat this type of way, uh, or we're going to continue to work you even harder if you don't. And so you know you're kind of put into this box inside of the military. And what's mm -hmm. interesting with that is if you look at a lot of folks that get out of the military, um, they balloon up very quickly afterwards as well. They gain a lot of weight. And it's because you go into this really structured program to a completely unstructured program, which is your life. So, you know, you yeah. gain your, you know, your life back and your freedom and everything else. And I'm not saying oh, I didn't have freedom there, but, you know, you go from the military to you, now you're in charge of yourself um, and you don't have the foundation of understanding of nutrition and, you know, the really the drive to go out there and do it. Not, you don't have somebody forcing you. You're like, hey, this is cool. I can still eat you know, 4,000 calories like I was eating in the military because I was running, you know, five times a day or three times a day and doing all this work to doing no work whatsoever and still eating those 4,000 calories, you know, and then all of a sudden you just start to, you know, it starts to get out of control pretty quickly. And, uh, you know, I was uh, uh, out of the military and I was uh, starting my cybersecurity career in the private sector. And I just started to continue to gain more and more and more and more weight. And uh, I remember I was at DEF CON, uh, what year would that be? I think it was 2006. I was at DEF CON and uh, I started getting some really weird heart but, but, but just for to put in yeah. perspective, how much weight did you lose after the boot camp in the Marine? And then how did you climb back? How much weight did you gain? So at my, my highest when I was a kid prior to going into the military, I was, so I'm 6'4", so I'm relatively tall. Um, I was about 260 pounds then and I dropped down to around 200 to 210 pounds when I was in the military. Um, and I, I, I was uh, in what they call PCP or physical conditioning platoon. The nickname was pork chop platoon. Um, and so I was in the pork chop platoon for a few months. And then uh, my drill instructors would literally, they'd sit you down and they say, you have 30 seconds to eat. And that's how they controlled my eating. Oh, wow. And, that's, and, that's and That's brutal. It's brutal. And they count one, two, three, four, five. It's not like one, 1,000, two, 1,000. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven. And then when, once you get to like 20, they're like, two, two, three, four, five, 30, you're done. You know, I'm like, oh, seriously? You know, you can only have like, you know, five bites of food that you could eat and then you go back and then that's it. You know, that's all you have. 
we actually had um, people smuggle like hot packet sauces and things like that. <laughs> they're so hungry. We had people eating food out of garbage cans in the middle of the military. They got busted and they, you know, they got you know destroyed after that. But oh, it, was, wow. it was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. But uh, but I, and then I, when I got when I that was probably my lowest and then I ballooned back up and my heaviest I uh, hit 315 pounds. Um, wow, I, that's huge. Yeah. So you gained almost 100 pounds. I gained 100 pounds as soon as I got out of the military, yeah. I mean, in gradual, you know, it took up a couple right, years. Right, right, right. But in, yeah. so in, in what, like in two years, three? I would say it was probably three years uh, it went, it, when I got out of the military to when I started hitting my, my peak uh, uh, weight. And then after that, I kind of balanced out. And I don't, I don't want to say balanced out isn't the right word, but I basically stayed around, you know, 300 to 320. It was kind of like the, the range that I would stay into, uh, you know, for, until, until I started having heart issues. So. Oh, wow. So that was the trigger? Yeah, I was. Uh, I was at. This is the the DEF CON story. So I, I was at DEF CON in 2006, and you know, I I'd, I'd been gaining a bunch of weight. I was probably let's see, 2006. So I got out 2005, 2006. I was probably you know 200 and maybe 50 pounds um, at that point in time, and um, and I uh, started having like these weird heart heart palpitations, and I went into uh, the emergency room at DEF CON thinking I was having a heart attack. And uh, they're like, oh, you know, by the time I'd gotten there, they're like, oh, it's, you know, you, your heart's fine. Everything's great. There's no issues. You know, it might've just been some, you know, something you ate. I was like, oh, okay. Well, then six months go by and I start having the same thing again. And I go to the doctor and they're like, yeah, your heart's fine. There's no issues. And then, you know, a year, you know, year and a half later, it just kept getting worse and worse and, and gradually um, moving up faster and faster. So I started having these heart palpitations like every three months versus every, you know, year or every six months. And then it just kept kept happening more and more, and eventually um, I found out that I had what was called atrial fibrillation, uh, which is uh, essentially a thing in your heart where uh, there's some there's multiple reasons for it, but I had what's called lone atrial fibrillation, which means there's they don't know what the cause of it was. Doctor said, you know, due to your weight uh, and your age, you shouldn't be having these issues um, at this period of time, and so I had to get uh, heart surgery done uh, just to correct. Uh, the the it's basically it's a short circuit in your heart that causes your heart to like skyrocket up to a million miles an hour and then I'd be sitting there and I'd be just dripping in sweat about ready to pass out just by sitting there doing absolutely nothing and I remember I had this heart monitor on and uh, I kept hitting the button uh, you know to to send the the heart readings the EKG readings to the um, I think it was a BlackBerry at the time too by the way so <laughs> you know a little bit old school but um, sent it back to the doctors and uh, they would read the results and like, hey, are you currently like doing cardio right now? And I'm like, no, I'm just sitting here eating a bowl of cereal. Like, yeah, you need to go to the ER. And so- uh, I But had what they uh, and, did yeah. the weight contrib contribute with that? Yeah, so this this is where uh, I kind of had a, an aha moment. Um, the, the doctor said, listen, uh, at your age, you should not be having atrial fibrillation. Uh, he's like, if I'm looking at your blood work I'm looking at you know your weight, uh, and he's like, these are direct causes for the issues that you're having right now. He's like, and, he, and this is what he said to me, which uh, really stuck with me. He's like, listen, if you don't make you know drastic changes uh, in your life, you're not going to be around for your kids. And I was like, oh, uh, that's well, that's a big one. Yes. You know, that's a that's a heavy one. And uh, so at that period of time, I was like, hey, I have to do something differently. I have to change what I'm doing. I have to do something that's 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 gonna you know, um, make this work better, uh, and you know, than what I'm currently doing. So that's when I kind of started kicking off, uh, my weight loss journey. But, you know, if, if and you, you've been in this same position before, you know, you have ups and downs so many times where you're like, I'm starting to lose it. And then I fall off of it and I'm back off again. And then I'm back onto this thing. And it's just like the cyclical effect. So I really had trouble breaking it. So I ended up losing, I think 40 pounds, uh, after the surgery. And then I gained it all back again. Oh, uh, and right. then, and so that was uh, in 2007 already, right? The surgery. The the surgery, the heart surgery was in 2008. Okay, uh, is when I had the heart surgery, and then uh, 2009 uh, is when I had gained it all back, and then um, this is where you know I, I I I've been public with this, but probably not very public with it. But you know I I tried everything. Uh, I've tried dieting. I tried doing the. Um, uh, you know, Shanti's insanity. I was doing my hotel rooms. I was killing myself with cardio, and um, I uh, ended up going the surgery route. And I had a gra gastric sleeve bypass, which uh, they they basically cut half your stomach out. And you know, what's interesting with that is uh, people that go through this this, this bariatric surgery, mm -hmm. 
um, you'll lose a ton of weight at first, right? So I lost a ton of weight at first. I dropped, I think my lowest, I was down to like 185, um, which was phenomenal. But over time, if you don't fix your habits, that, that stomach starts to grow again and it starts to expand and you start having the same exact issues that you had before. So, you know, a lot of people, including me, it started to fail again. So I started gaining weight again and I could eat more food because the stomach had stretched uh, and I'd kept gaining more and more and more weight again. So I started shooting back up in weight again, you know, up to like 250, 260, not the 315, but you know, all of these things that I've been trying to fight, you know, the, for the longest time, finally, you know, I just, I just, it was like at a, at a low point to where I felt like I couldn't win against any of this. Right. And, you know, that's when I really kind of had an epiphany, which was I have to figure out something different that causes me to not have to deal with this because you know, the, a surgery that I, you know, went through is not working. Um, you know, medicine is not working. Uh, you know, I, I just, I have a problem and that's really where my mind switched. Um, and I, and I, it's hard to explain, but it was more so like a switch of, I, I need to do this and I don't have any other choice or else again, I'm not going to be here for my kids. But it's what is what interesting I... to me is that you are a very smart guy and uh, it took you multiple attempts to figure that out. It's to the point that you had a surgery, you lost and you gained again. So it's really interesting that it took you that attempt and error to find your sweet spot. Yeah, and I think a lot of it has to do with habits. Um, you know, we we as humans get into very specific habits and in the cybersecurity industry, specifically in IT, we live very sedentary lifestyles. Yeah. And, and if you look at what was kind of happening during that period of time, you know, I was just building my career. I was just, you know, speaking at all these conferences. I was at parties all the time, drinking and, you know, um, eating horrible foods and, you know, uh, traveling all the time. I was traveling 80, 90% and, you know, I'm, I'm at hotel to hotel eating food to food to food to food. And that, that lifestyle, and I, you know, I wasn't sleeping at all. I mean, I, you know, my, I used to brag, hey, I just coded a new version of this and I was up till four o'clock in the morning, woke up at seven, you know, now starting my day. So all the things that I shouldn't be doing from a lifestyle perspective, just to build my, my excuse was just to build my career, um, you know, really I think had that impact of keeping me into that habitual cycle of not being able to correct it. And that, that change I think in my mind was I failed at everything. Like I, 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 there, you know, I had no, there was nothing I was being successful at with this, right? And I'd always look at myself like I'm overweight. I need to do something about it. Uh, I'm not happy. My, you know, my, my, um, my, my memory wasn't great. I felt like crap all the time. I had no energy, uh, brain fog. You know, all this stuff was hitting me. You know, with with all of this um, at a given time. And you know, you you kind of say to yourself, I'm I'm defeated, yeah. right? And I think when you get to that low point that's where you can start to build new habits. Um, and for me, uh, I think the, the saving grace for me is when I go into something typically, uh, like something that I'm really, really passionate about, like cybersecurity or you know, certain things, I just dive heavy into it. And I kind of made that switch of diving heavy into my nutrition, my health uh, and fitness and you know, I started off small. I did a lot of reading on nutrition, macros, uh, calorie counting, all of these different things. You know, I got a tonal put into place. And this is, uh, let's see, I got, you know, I really started kicking this off, I would say in 2017 uh, is really when I really started kind of kicking off the health training on this. Mm -hmm. And you know, then I started, you know, reading as much as I possibly could. I eventually got a personal trainer to kind of home in everything for me. And I've had a lot of success with that, of being able to keep myself into this kind of framework, but also develop brand new habits that fit within my lifestyle that is part of what I do every single day. You know, nutrition, workout regimen, um, you know, what I, you know, how I eat, what I eat, uh, sleep, uh, you know, my mindset towards that, continuously learning new things and, and, you know, researching things and keeping myself motivated. And all these things took time to develop throughout there, but it was one of those things where I'd had ultimately hit rock bottom and I had to make a change to go and do something different. But you're still extremely passionate about cybersecurity. You have your own company, so you are still a very busy guy. How do you balance today or even in the beginning, 2017, when you, you figured that out and you follow and it was like, well, that's working. Did you stop coding at 4 a.m.? Did you stop being a workaholic? What really changed in your career that allowed you to start prioritizing your health? 
So I, I think we, we, we kind of make excuses for ourselves that we're always too busy. And, and, I, and, and let me rephrase, we are always too busy. There's so many distractions in life that you know, cause us to do this. And we take on so much. And especially with work, you, know, you have emails, you have messages, you have meetings, you have all of these things that are hitting you, you have your job responsibilities, then you have your home life and you have everything that's already a current routine. And I think what, what you know, for me, I had to take a look at and say, what's most important for me in my career to, to, to maintain the success and the ability to continue that? But, you know, and what's you know, important to me, obviously, is my family. So wh- how do I balance adding certain things into that? And I started off small. You know, I think I started working out twice a week uh, for a resistance training and doing like one day of cardio. So it was like three days and really just three hours, right? And I started working on my nutrition, which really doesn't take a lot of time, right? Maybe I have to prepare a little bit more for food or, you know, what I'm eating is very, a little bit different, but ultimately that's not a big time. And then I started working on steps, getting steps in. So it's making small changes, um, you know, from, from, a, from a timing perspective that didn't really impact a large percentage of the day. But what I started finding was is that I, I started to enjoy it and, and, and wanted more of that time. So my priority started shifting and I started saying, well, are all of these things truly important that I have to get done all the time? Mm-hmm. You know, is, 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 you know, working till three o'clock in the morning really the best use of my time? Or can I go to bed at 10 or 11 and get, you know, six to seven to eight hours of sleep and, and recover properly? So you start to change your habits based off of it and your schedule starts to do things differently too. So like for now, you, you, you fast forward to today, you know, I wake up at 6.30 in the morning get ready to go. I get my lift out first thing in the morning before anybody's even, you know, bothering me at work or anything else. And I'm already, I've already started the note, a high note on the day of, of completing something that's for me, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you know, something that I've done for myself. So that works within my schedule. And then the rest of the day is, is just, you know, icing on the cake. It's already been a great day because I got my lift in and then I can go and do all my other stuff that, that comes along with it. So, you know, I think it was, it was starting off small and then building those habits and then finding what was actually really important to me. And what's important to me is having energy to go and play with my kids. And I coach my, you know, I coach my kids basketball teams. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a very different person from an energy perspective in my family and how I interact with my kids and work with my kids and, you know, uh, and, you know, active with my kids. So the priorities I think shifted towards family and myself, but it also skyrocketed and, and prioritized and optimized what I'm doing at work as well, because I'm much more efficient at work at what I do, um, you know, and I and I've been able to focus, you know, my areas on on work that are most important and not have to worry about the rest of the noise that's out there. Do you believe that because, as you said, when you left military and you start to really invest time on your career, you you want to establish yourself, you want to build your name, and 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 you invest more hours in your career. Do you think that you had to go through that path and even get obese at that point to build your name? Or if you could go back, you would do differently? I, I really wish um, I knew what I knew now going back then because I could have done both. There's no question about it. Really? Um, and, yeah. And, and, and I really regret doing the surgery. Um, because you know anything that you're cutting out of your body or changing in your body is not a not a good thing, um, and you know while I haven't had luckily had any major side effects from that, you know it's one of those things that you know if if I knew what I knew today, I could curb that behavior and do the exact same thing because I basically had to do the exact same thing a second time because I lost all the weight and then I gained it all back again. Um, this is something that that has worked for me and has worked for hours. So there's no question that you have to put ample time early in your career, uh, I think to, to build up, if that's what you want to accomplish. If you want to, you know, make a name for yourself and, you know, be an entrepreneur and start your own businesses that, that comes with a cost of, you know, time, but there is always time for yourself, for your health, for your family. And you have to prioritize that with everything else that you're doing. Don't get me wrong. It's, it, it wouldn't be easy, mm-hmm. uh, but I absolutely could have done it for sure. Even with all the travel, traveling 90%, because travel is challenging. Travel is challenging for the nutrition. Travel is challenging to working out because not every hotel is going to have a decent gym. So what? how will you manage that today? I don't think you travel that much today uh, compared to what you used to, right? No, I've definitely cut down on travel, but I do have very specific travel regimens. So uh, Planet Fitness, even though I don't go locally here, I have a membership to. So that when I'm going locally, they always have a plan of fitness wherever I'm 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 at from a local a locality perspective in a very close distance. So I can at least get you know my lifts in early in the morning when I get to the hotel. 
Uh, I also find places that I can eat at. There's fast food restaurants you have options like Chipotle, for example. You could do you know rice and, and chicken and beans, and that's a you know a pretty well decent meal. You can do Chinese food, chicken and you know chicken and rice. Uh, you know do whole foods like you know uh, steaks. You know you go to a steak place, just do steaks and asparagus and some other stuff, and skip all the other things. So you can prioritize your meals as you're traveling, and I've done that very well um, over the past year and a half that I've started back up with travel. I still travel quite a bit, but not nearly as much as I would do before. I'd say maybe I'm at 20% now versus 80%, which is a big difference. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I'm still I'm still prioritizing my health, nutrition, my lifts. I don't skip. I don't miss. Uh, you know, I was just in D.C. And um, I do five days of, of resistance training and two days of HIIT training at Orange Theory. And uh, at D.C., I woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning, went to Orange Theory in D.C., which was a great facility. You know, did my, my HIIT training, went upstairs, showered, came back, and, you know, had my meetings for the rest of the day. So, you know, it just comes down to the prioritization, right? What's what's important for you? Um, and, and you know, for me, it's one of those things that I've drilled it into my mind now at this point that it's not something that I can skip. So, like, you know how you wake up in the morning, you take a shower, yep. you put some deodorant on, you yep. brush your teeth. It's part of your day. You cannot skip. Part of your day. Yeah. Nope. I, I have to do it. It's unfortunate. Hey, mind, I know we're in a different place right now. You don't want to go over here, but we're going to go and do it because I have to do it, just like I do anything else. So, you know, the, you know once you have that... They kind of control over your mind, and it takes time to build. I think those habits. Yeah. Um, you can really accomplish anything with regards to what situation you're in. Yeah, and, and probably you as a um, uh, you own this company, you probably have a lot of um, people that maybe work for you that are in a situation that you probably were when you started this. So, how do you really? encourage your employees to to take care of uh, of their health uh, is this something that you emphasize at work absolutely um you know we have uh, a health and fitness channel within our, our our you know chat software we always continuously talk about it uh, we have programs established that you can go to gyms and things like that as part of your your benefits packages um and i'm also always helping folks out um, as part of it too. So like I get questions all the time from, from employees like, hey, I'm looking at doing this, what do you think? And so I've become kind of the, I guess the, the physical fitness instructor for, for Trusted Second Binder Defense, but um, which I'm totally fine with, I like that. But, um, you know, navigating folks into different directions. But, you know, we also, um, you know, from a, a company perspective, uh, our culture is extremely important to us. And we don't have a culture of burnout. Uh, we don't have a culture of riding our people hard. Uh, you know, j- just to put in perspective, in consulting, which is one of the toughest things I think you can do in in cybersecurity, because you're continuously having to be cutting edge, you're traveling all the time, and all this other stuff, right? Consulting typically has the highest uh, um, loss rate for employees than pretty much any other industry, and or any other uh, vertical within cybersecurity aside from incident response. And uh, we, I think, have lost two people in the past three years, um, and those were for you know personal related issues or a great opportunity or things of that effect. So. You know, we keep our people, maintain our people, because we we really have a really laid back, you know, family friendly culture um, at at our companies, and we really try to take care of our people, which means not burning them out with having to feel like you have to work all the time. And I, I you know, I get mad if somebody's working, you know, past five o'clock at night. You know, you know, if I see somebody on 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 you know chat or at the office or wherever, I'm like, hey, what are you doing? Like, go home to your family, go hang out. You know, there's no reason to stress over this stuff. Um, and we give ample time. We we only put our consultants on one engagement at a time. Um, so that, uh, you know, they're not, you know, I mean, most consulting organizations you have, you know, three or four engagements you're running at a time. Only one, focus on those. Don't stress out. We have a lot of things to try to alleviate stress in those areas. We have a, uh, a gym at the office. We also have a massage chair at the office as well. So it's called Grand, the Grand Siesta Room. You can go in there and take a nap and get a massage chair done as well. So, you know, we, we, we definitely try to tout uh, health and fitness, but we also recognize that a huge part of that is mindset. If the mindset of the company is, you know, kill your people and, and have them, you know, work 80 hours a week and all this other stuff. Well, you're going to start to have those issues, I think, throughout, throughout your entire company. And not only that, I think that the, one of the great advantage in your case is that you lead by example. You walk the talk. It's not that only on paper. It's not only theoretical. You actually are doing. And this actually helps people to not only get inspired, but to use you as a mirror. Say, well, he, if he can do it, you know, I, I should be doing as well. So I think it's very important to walk the talk because there are a lot of companies that they have all the all those benefits, but then the manager is sending emails over the weekend and they're waiting for to, to answer that email, right? Yeah, and that's uh, you know I think the the inspiration that I get from this whole thing, you know, I've always been uh, in this industry somebody that likes to share 
my failures, my my experiences, what's been successful for me. That's why I released all you know all my tools are all open source. You know, I spend you know spent you know tens of thousands of, of hours you know of uh, you know tens of hundreds of thousands of hours on on coding um, you know tools just for the community and industry to use to better the security industry. Um, and I've always been very transparent as well as open with everything that I'm doing because I feel like you know if I can share my experiences and my failures, you can help somebody else be successful as well. And I and, and I always get asked the question. You know, if you can go back in time, what are the things that you would change? And I, I may have said yes, I would love to go back and change that. But at the end of the day, like those failures, I think make who you are. Yeah. You know, as a person. And I look back at at old Dave. You know, big Dave, and that was an awesome dude. Like old Dave was, you know, a great guy. <laughs> did a whole bunch of work. Did some really awesome things. You know, that's not me anymore. I'm, you know, I may still be the same person, but you know, like different mentality and mindset. Um, but those failures, you know, help us make us stronger. So the the sharing and the collaboration. You know, in our community around health and fitness, it's 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 crazy to me that the military never taught me, you know, how to do nutrition, uh, how to break down calories, how to eat, you know, the right things, how to do, you know, fitness and and, and these regiments that you can do. Like I didn't I didn't know any of the basics of <clears throat> of any of this, and it's like, you know, uh, you, you think about macro count, you know, macronutrients, uh-huh. and you think about calorie counting, and people are like, oh, that's just for bodybuilders and blah blah blah. Yeah. I'm like. No, no, it's it's and it, if it was always broken down as simple as hey, it's calories in versus calories out. Like you always think like hey, I need to go on keto, which I did keto so many times. You know, I think at the time it was called Atkins, and then mm-hmm. it kind of converted to keto, and I drop you know forty pounds and I gain sixty pounds back. And you know, it's always a struggle because these diets are at the end of the day calories in versus calories out, and they're not sustainable long term and all this other stuff. So, um, it, to to most folks, you know, some people can stick with it for for a while and have success, but um, <clears throat> you know, I wish I wish I had known those fundamentals and foundations because I think that's what ultimately made me successful in this is I, I now have a framework that works for me, my schedule, my life that I can use for the rest of my life. And I know I'm going to be successful at it. You know, that's the difference. Yeah. Like I, you know, with the, the sleeve, I could see myself gradually starting to increase again in, in, in weight and start to increase in weight. And I had no control over it because I had the sleeve and that was my diet, right? That was my, my barrier. I had a, a physical barrier that was preventing me from actually being able to eat the calories, you know, that I wanted. And so, you know, eventually when that failed, I had nothing to go back on, very similar to what people do when they diet. They have nothing when they come off of that diet to come back on. You know, this is not a, a diet. It's a, a framework that you live your life in for the rest of your life that that is successful. And that's that's what gives me hope with this whole thing is, one, I'm 40 years old. You know, I'm the strongest I've ever been in my entire life. I'm the fastest I've ever been in my entire life. My blood work is the best it's ever been in its entire life. You know, I have the most energy I've ever had in my entire life. I feel like I'm, I'm, you know, back in the military again. You know, in Iraq, you know, hopping over fences and things like that. So you feel um, you feel even better than when you were in the military. I feel even better, and I'm even stronger than I was in the military. No question about it. Absolutely. At 40 years old, so I just I just ran a five minute mile uh, yesterday, actually. So I just PR'd on a five minute mile yesterday on on, on Orange Theory. So. Five minute mile, forty years old, not too bad, and being able to deadlift, you know, six hundred pounds is, is is a pretty good accomplishment. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. But um, one thing that uh, I noticed, I'm forty eight, uh, is with time, and you're probably gonna feel this down the road. When I was forty, I was uh, not feeling that much. Is the recovery, right? Um, the recovery as you pass the 40s takes longer even mainly when you do a heavy lifting you do a, a heavy deadlift day or a heavy leg day the soreness and the, the body aches last longer do you do anything special for recovery so um you know for me uh i i space my my workout routines to help with recovery so like i um normally you hear like push pull you know legs uh for for instance i kind of flip so I do two legs a week, but I, I, I make them less back centric for one and then very heavy back centric for the other. And then I mix those in. So I'm, I'm kind of spacing my workout routines a little bit so that it gives my time, it gives my muscles time to, to recover. But I also um, am a huge proponent of sleep is number one. So I, I, I religiously get, you know, six and a half to eight hours of sleep a day. Uh, and that's, that is, you know, no, you know, like it, it, is a, it is a staple. I have to get it. I also track um, my recovery through WHOOP, which isn't exactly uh, you know a great science towards that, but heart rate variability has been shown to see how well you've actually recovered from certain types of strain on your body. So heart rate, heart, uh, heart rate variability, if you have a heart rate variability tracker, that can be a good sign. I do the sauna uh, usually five days a week, um, which has also helped me out uh, with recovery. 
I know cold plunging is, is the hot topic <laughs> right now, but I, I, I hate cold. I really hate cold. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't do cold plunging, which I probably should, but uh, not even the cryo. I have a try there. cryotherapy. Cryo is a little bit I better. Actually like, I like cryo. Yeah, cryo is uh, good. Cryo chambers are great. Um, I, and it's weird because I think it's a water cold thing. Um, yeah. Because it, it actually comes down to, and this might be some like PTSD stuff from the military, but when I was in Iraq, uh, we used to have to take like really cold showers. And there, there's times where I'm taking showers and we're getting rocketed or mortared and, you know, things are blowing up around you. So I think I equate mentally, sub, subliminally, like like mortars going off in my, in, my, in my backyard when I'm taking a cold shower. So. <laughs> I, uh, I don't like taking cold showers, but uh, um, but yeah, you know, recovery is definitely a, a big piece, and you know, that's one of the, one of the hard things too. As I started, you know, as a novice coming through this and, and pushing myself too hard, um, I would ignore things that I probably shouldn't have. Like for mm -hmm. example, I'd injure my shoulder, and I'd be like, oh, I'll just work through it. It's fine, you know. And then it gets worse and worse and worse. So you know, I think as I get older, I have to be very careful um, and pay attention to my body and recovery and not just be like over prideful of like, oh, I can do this, this is fine, I'm gonna get over it. Um, and I think that's one of the things where you mentioned as you get older too, the, the, the heavy lifting stuff may kind of take a back burner where you're doing more volume yeah. than you are, you know, the amount of the, the strength. And I know that's coming soon. I know I'm not gonna be able to continue to shoot up in, in deadlifts and in this, all this other stuff. I'm probably gonna have to go more on the volume side um, to maintain or grow muscle. And that's probably where I'll, I'll you know, lay my, my hat in. But, um, you know, recovery is definitely a big piece for me and um you are very transparent which is quite amazing because not a, a, a lot of people are willing to go and talk so openly about trt like you talk about uh yeah. and uh, it's very yep. important mainly after 40s uh so trt is also another thing that helps a lot with uh, recovery huge and that's i'll tell you um you know so so for the folks listening, you know, testosterone replacement therapy has always been kind of a taboo subject, I think, uh, for men specifically, but just in general, because, you know, you, you, you know, testosterone was heavily abused by bodybuilders and stuff like that back in the past, and it kind of got a bad name. You know, if you look at the medical research that's coming out now, I mean, testosterone plays such a critical role as we age in not only longevity, increasing our, 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 our length to live, but also our quality of life, which is the most important. And there's a, a, a pretty big pandemic of testosterone reduction um, happening across the globe right now. If you take um, our, our great grand, I'm not, not our great grandfathers, our grandfathers, so two generations, right? Mm -hmm. They have they had on average had 60 percent more testosterone than we did um, uh, in our in the same age age groups. So like if you're 40, you have 60 percent less testosterone than your grandfather did, you know, uh, two generations ago. They don't know exactly why the cause of that is. Some of you know some research is leading towards like all the plastics that we've introduced and some other things, but who knows? But studies are showing a massive reduction in testosterone levels in men over time, and testosterone plays such a huge role on our muscle mass. Which you know there's 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 three really good um, calculations for longevity in men. Uh, one of them is muscle mass, one of them is bone density, and the other one is grip strength. So those three things equate to how typically long a person, a male will live. And if we're dropping in testosterone, our ability to maintain or build muscle mass substantially goes down. Our ability to maintain good bone density goes down as well as a number of other things, energy production, uh, you know, brain clarity, uh, all of those things are, are linked to testosterone. And uh, you know, what's interesting is I was on this health journey and um, a buddy of mine messaged me on Discord <laughs> And uh, you know we're gaming or whatever, and he's like, "Hey, I know you're doing the you know the, the fitness stuff. Have you ever looked at TRT or testosterone?" And I kind of blew it off at first. I'm like, "Yeah, that that stuff's like you know like hokey pokey stuff. Like you know that sounds like you know what a bodybuilder do. I'm like, I'm not into that or anything like that. That's just garbage." And you know uh, I started looking at it a bit, and I'm just like, "Well, I have a I have a, a general practitioner doctor coming up, uh, you know, in like two weeks. I'm like, I'll just ask him for the blood work. I'm like, hey, can you just test my testosterone just to get a check and see what happens, right?" And what I found out was my testosterone was in the 200s, which is in the hypogonadism stage, uh, hypogonadism stage of, of, of my levels of testosterone. So my testosterone levels were basically a, a 70 year old uh, at that point in time. I was like, whoa, that's crazy. And you know, I had all the symptoms, I just didn't realize it. You know, brain fog, lack of energy, you know, lack of drive, lack of motivation towards you know, uh, yeah. any type of physical activity. And I had no idea that that was the cause of that. And as soon as I started going on testosterone, I will tell you my energy levels increased, uh, my ability to put on muscle mass increased, my drive towards working out increased, 
uh, my brain clarity, how effective I am of operating, my recovery. Your moods, your your, your like moods is a, yeah. is another life. <laughs> is a whole another life. Hundred yeah. percent. And you know, it's 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 funny because people associate you know testosterone to steroids and things of that effect. And you know, testosterone is a natural hormone that we produce. It's 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 a paramount thing for us. And you know, people are like, oh, you get really aggressive on testosterone. That's not true. It it actually amplifies. There's a lot of great studies on this. It amplifies your emotions that you currently have. So if you're a really angry person you might be a little bit more angry. If you're a happy person, you're gonna be more happy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your mood, you know, drastic, my, my mood drastically increased. It was one of the best things that I could ever have done. And I'm so glad that this person uh, mentioned it to me in the infosec industry, by the way, uh, really can't thank him enough because it put me on a whole track of reading, you know, scientific research studies and papers and all these things and getting into, you know, I listened to the Huberman Labs podcast, which is a you know, uh, a neurobiologist out of Stanford that goes through the latest research. And, and, and I guess just started getting into the science of things because it's just so fascinating what we can do to really try to help our bodies out. And I, and you probably got a really good doctor too, because honestly, there are some doctors that do not encourage this. They are so old mindset that it's like, no, 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 you don't need this. It's good enough. You know, yeah, uh, you have to have a good doctor. It was funny. So uh, uh, I, the, my doctor didn't have a ton of knowledge around uh, this, but he he knew that I needed to go and do something. So you know, I also had an endocrinologist at the time because I had a, a thyroid issue, um, and uh, I had to get a partial thyroidectomy. So they removed half my thyroid, um, and uh, not not weight related in any way, shape, or form. Just they happened to have a, a nodule uh, there that they had to remove. So um, uh, not cancerous, which is great, uh, but. Uh, my endo was like, hey, you know, there's a lot of research going on in testosterone. I would heavily recommend it. So my endo was actually really supportive um, of of going through this and, and doing that. And so what was interesting is as I started getting into the, 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 the testosterone stuff, my, you know, I would start going into my doctor from a PCP perspective and he would spend, you know, 15 minutes looking at my transformation. Like, oh my God, like you're, you're got muscles now, you look great, you're happy, your blood work is looking amazing. Like you've done a complete 180 of where you're at. He's like, the next 45 minutes was me teaching him what I was doing. <laughs> and, and so my doctor's now on TRT, which is awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> but that, that should show you how kind of jacked up our medical field yes. uh, really is right yeah. now. Because, you know, PCPs are not, in, in, in any general practitioner is not going to be up to speed with any of the latest research. They're still going off of what they were taught 20 years ago or 30 years ago. And it's reactive. It's, hey, do you have a symptom? here's a fix, or if I can't fix it, here's a specialist to go to, mm -hmm. right? And, and our medical systems really broke on that right now because they're not focusing on quality of life long-term, they're focusing on the problems that exist today. And unless you take control of your own health, you're not gonna get better. That's so true, that's so true. But this uh, this was hilarious. So you end up convincing him to go to TRT. That was awesome, yeah. that was awesome. He's doing great too. He's like lifting all the time. Every time I see him now, he's getting jacked. You know, he's like a jack doctor now. I'm like, dude, what's going on? Look at you. You know, like. <laughs> One thing that is important to also clarify, uh, because a lot of people that are not well informed, they see Dave all jack and huge pump and they immediately go oh Davis take steroids right and then you open up you wrote a blog I remember I read and uh, about TRT and everything but people continue sometimes to give all the credits to the TRT and that's just not the reality I mean there is a lot of work that you need to do to get this done and it doesn't happen overnight it happens over a long period of time with consistency because if you are doing TRT but with a very crap nutrition and not training well and not sleeping well, you will not have the same results. No, you, you go in the exact opposite direction. And you know, I think that's the, the, the misconception that we have to change is that, you know, it, yes, there is, there is testosterone abuse, there is steroid abuse, there is you know, all these things that we can do to to do our bodies. But even, even at that point, most of the people that are taking steroids already have locked in nutrition, already have locked in, you know, like regimens that they're doing. They're working out every single day. Yes, they're increasing their muscle mass substantially based on, on that, but they're still putting the work in to go and do it. Mm -hmm. Testosterone though, I mean, I'm, I'm riding normal levels that a normal human being should have. I'm not, you know, I'm not in the 1500s or the 2000s or the 3000 ranges. You know, my testosterone levels typically range between 700 and 900, which is a normal human being. Like that normal humans have the same level of testosterone that I do. I just don't produce it. And, and we, you know, who knows why? It could be, again, from plastics. It could have been from my time at war. And, I, you know, I spent, 
you know, two and a half years in the Middle East and Iraq. You know, there's a number of reasons that 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 I have low testosterone, but you know, just because I'm using TRT doesn't equate to putting on muscle mass. It is a lot of work. It's probably the hardest thing I think I've ever had to do in my life because it's the only thing that I've had to, to stay 100%. Well, you know, we all have our days where we eat Taco Bell and stuff like that, but you know, like 98% consistent with everything that we're doing, right? And and that's a challenging thing to do, but at the end of the day, it's so much worth it. Like how I feel about myself, you know, I've always had, uh, you know, body dysmorphia around how I look and how I feel that, you know, how, how shirts fit on me, you know, I'd always wear baggy clothes because I didn't want to see, you know, how, how overweight I was. You know, I feel so much more confident in myself, what I look like. And it's not just the aesthetics. Like, you know, that, that's, that's fine. You know, you know, you've seen the pictures when I have a pump in my house. I, I can't believe I post a picture of myself without a shirt. Like that, that has taken me a long time to overcome from a fear perspective because of how bad I've always viewed myself and my self image. But, you know, it's not the aesthetics that are most important. It's, it's how I feel that is the most important. I feel strong. I feel energetic. I have the energy to, to do things in the day that I didn't have before. I'm there for my kids. Like it's just everything just fits into place when you do this. And you, you know? feel more. Amazing. And you feel more confident. Uh, you 100%. feel with yourself, and and that's that's huge. And I remember uh, after I lost all the weight, and um, I, I, I went in a different route because uh, my goal was to compete in bodybuilding. Uh, after I lost 100 pounds, so I went straight to 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 the show. Uh, oh, I give you so much credit for that. That is something that I never could get myself to do. I mean, I, I don't have as anywhere near of an image of being able to go on the stage and do something like that. So kudos to you. That's a lot to, to get over. That's amazing. <laughs> what you went through is a, is a huge accomplishment. Thanks, I appreciate. But it, it was it was super fun. Uh, and to me, it was it was very emotional because when I stepped on stage for the first time in 2014 um, I I couldn't believe I was doing that and I got last place uh, after you know the poses and everything I literally got that last place but I was happy my goal was to be there right so I said well I feel extremely grateful thankful but next year I'd like to be on top three so next year comes in 2015 I go to the NPC Oklahoma, the master division, got second place. So I was like, wow, that's awesome. Second place. That's amazing. Got my medal. And then the next year I want to win. And then 2016, I won my first show. But it took like, that's so cool. you know, so many years. And that's what people sometimes, and you know this because uh, you own a company. Many times we see people that want the results too fast in everything that they do. Yes. Um, People that uh, work really hard and they want a promotion. People that uh, want a promotion after just one year of working hard. And I keep saying, look, it takes time and consistency to achieve everything that is important. And and bodybuilding show me that it takes a lot of work, you know, to move a needle. You know, it does and and it not and not only that, but it gets harder as you get better. So you know, your your muscle gains and your ability to even get that needle move is so much harder than it was when you first started. So, you know, the the progress part of it, I think was, that's why, you know, uh, Ben, my trainer that I went with, uh, who's become one of my best friends, you know, by the way, in life, uh, Ben Canning. Uh, ben, um, you know, what I really liked with him, I remember when I first started with him, I'm like, hey, I wanna look like this guy. And it was this massively shredded big dude. I'm like, do you think I can get there in like a year? And, you know, Ben said back to me, he's like, hey, you know, we'll, we'll see what we can do, okay? And, uh, you know, it was more so, you know, not shutting me down, but also knowing, hey, I've, I've spent all these years of abuse on my body. You're not going to be a bodybuilder that's been working 20 years on his physique, you know, in, 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 in one a year, year yeah. it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So my expectations were a little bit out of there. But, you know, what I liked about how he put things together was, you know, as long as you can track wins and small progress throughout there, it keeps you on that track because you start to see the differences in in whether it's you know hey I'm, I'm losing a little bit of body fat I can start to see like one of my abs you know mm -hmm. like or you know you start to see like your your muscle mass on, on your arms start to you know you have a little bit of a pop on your shoulder you know or you know you you have wins where you see your your weight that you're lifting going up and your PR and you're competing against yourself and making yourself better right those those progress things those slow things that take time to get to, but but you're still small progresses are, are great things to consider monumental wins as you start to go through this. And, you know, just recently I went through 
um, a cutting phase. So I had balked up to about 250. And when I say bulk up, I, it wasn't like a 30 bulk. Mm -hmm. I was still you know, eating really carefully. You know, I was watching my nutrition, but I increased my calories to try to put on as much muscle mass as I possibly could. And this is really the, the first time I've done something like this because for me, putting on weight is a, an extremely scary yes. thing. Yes. I have failed so many times and I've gotten it out of control to where when I started. And so this time around, we took it slow intentionally. And, 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 but you know, I went up to 250 basically. And 250 was 250 Dave was 250 when I started losing, you know, a control of my sleeve, you know? And so I looked at that and I, you know, you start to freak out, but this time around was, was very different. I, I trusted myself. I trusted the framework that I was in. I was confident in myself. And by the way, 250 Dave, that now looks way different than absolutely Dave because one thing that people then, right? don't realize is the body composition now as you even measure right. your body fat it was incredible it was like five percent so this is insane the body composition changed drastically and insane. and that's one thing people don't realize too is in the beginning and or sometimes you're gonna hit some plateaus and if you if you measure yourself just with the scale that's not a good measure because sometimes you are gaining right. muscle and losing fat, muscle weights more. So the scale is not gonna change that much, but you are changing your body composition. Yep, and if you're doing all the right things, you know you're getting the adequate amount of protein, you know, you're eating the right amount of calories, you, you know, you can make adjustments here and there, you can do, you know, measurements, you know, waist, you know, uh, uh, arms, uh, shoulders, you know, quads, you know, uh, your hips, you know, those things can also be indicators too. The scale for me, was more of a metrics of, of, am I eating too much? You know, where I'd, I'd only want to gain like a pound a week or so mm -hmm. was kind of my, my goal, right? So, you know, I'm, I'm getting myself adequate calories to do heavier, intense workouts, but I'm not eating a ton more to where it's like, hey, I'm gaining five pounds, 10 pounds, et cetera, you know, as you go along. But, you know, I, I bulked up to 250, but what was really awesome to go through was the cutting phase. <laughs> And I cut down uh, today. I it's funny because uh, Ben has an insane thing of we call it the the black magic of of calories of Ben. It doesn't make any sense, but it works so well. <laughs> but uh, I was I was on 2,000 calories a day, you know, and I dropped down to 1,900, and that was my lowest that I've gone to. And that's a lot. That's a, a a pretty drastic deficit for me. My my maintenance mode is about 2,500 calories. So I was I was shedding the weight off, and I was sticking to it, and I was under control, and I knew what I was doing, and you know I had that mindset there already that I had all the tools available to me to do that. And then, you know, around Christmas time, Ben brought me up to, to maintenance mode at 2,500 calories, and I still continue to lose weight, which, you know, is, is, is mind boggling to me. But I'm, I'm right now, as of today, I dropped even more weight since the last time I did measurements. So I'm at 222 right now. Wow. Um, and uh, so, you know, dropped, you know, quite a bit of weight pretty, pretty, pretty well. And, you know, but being able to do that and be successful with that, and to go up and then to go down when I needed to, it, it feels like I have a whole new lease on life because I've learned so much over the past, you know, two and a half years with Ben specifically. But to be able to to do something like that, I know that I can continue this on for the rest of my life, right? And so this is like the ultimate test for me to get to a certain point and then go up and then go down. So it's and I'm now starting a, a balking phase again to uh, try to put on as much muscle mass as I can uh, throughout the winter time. But uh, when you went to the first game. Um... What was your weight before you start bulking? About like 220 or 230 or something? I was so I when I when I when I went into the into the prior to bulking, I was at uh, two 228. So you and then I bulked up to 250. Okay. Yeah. In in uh, in how long? Like two months, three months? Oh no, this was this was over a span of uh, six months. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So slow, s slow and slow, like you know just slowly making sure I'm in a surplus, you know, gaining enough uh, weight to be able to do it and then kind of monitor and maintain it. And the way Ben kind of looked at it was, um, you know, can you still see visible abs? Um, you know, how much body fat are we putting on? And, and when does it start to get to a point to where, you know, you're, 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 you are you're can't see abs anymore and you put on too much body fat. So that's when we start to cut back down again. So we, we never let it get too out of control, um, but more so to kind of push up, you know, and, and what's been awesome is if you look at my before, so if I look at my two, 228, versus my 228 now, it's such an incredible difference between the two of how much muscle mass I was actually able to put on the definition, um, you know, the the tone, you know, just, it looks very, very different, which is really cool. And do you want to stay on that weight for only like three months and then bulk again? Is that the goal? Well, the, 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 the period was, uh, 
Good question. So I, I would like to get more into a regiment where I'm doing, you know, wintertime bulking, summertime cutting, mm -hmm. you know, so I have more of the the ability to kind of have the beach body, you know, when I'm when I'm in the summertime going on vacation yeah. and things like that. So um, this is going to be just a, a mini kind of bulk to get, you know, f to get through winter and then sh shed it off for the summertime. But then I'm going to get more towards a, a, a summer versus winter type of cycle. So this one was more so timing wise. I wasn't at a position uh, yet to where I wanted to shave it off because I was continuously, you know, I wasn't, you know, two and a half years is very different from how long you've been lifting for, from being able to put on muscle mass and, and what you've been able to do. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my, I'm still not at a point yet where I'm, I'm happy about how big I am. I want to get bigger. And then from there kind of shut it off. So it's just, now I'll get to a more regular cycle, but I have to cut it a little bit short this time around. Going oh yeah. But, and day. also you're taller and, and so your, yes. your body structure requires, it has, plenty of space to add more muscle just because your body structure you're very tall uh yeah. like except except my calves i can never grow out my calves so <laughs> no but you don't have a bad calves i mean for, at, at all my calves never grow feels like <laughs> but uh uh what is um now that you have this framework you see i think w works well what is the most challenging thing to maintain this or you have absolutely no challenge to maintain this routine you know, I, I think it's, it's um, you know, as I progress, how do I continue to progress? And I think that's, you know, learning different things that how your body works. Like um, you always hear about the, you know, mind muscle body connection. And that's, that's a legit thing. It is. Um, you know, creating pathways to your muscles and being able to get, you know, a, an understanding about how your muscles contracting. And if you're hitting the muscle appropriately and basically being able to tell your muscle, you know, to do that. You know, that's one of the things that I've been focusing really heavy, heavily on and attacking my muscles in different ways and getting better at and more efficient at how I'm doing my lifting. Sorry if you hear dogs barking, by the way, they're crazy. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I'm trying to get better with, with how I do my exercises um, and to get more refined with how I'm doing. Nutrition is always a thing that I could get better on. Um, you know, it's, it's just one of those continuously improving things where you find different foods that are, are you know, good a whole food you know that you can continue to eat and, and, and stick with um, but you know I think the the major challenging parts for me are, are relatively over because I'm in this framework I'm in a habit I don't ever want to break that habit and and the hard part is kind of done right? yes yes and now now it's you know and, and I remember like I remember hating going to the gym really I remember hating waking up well you know waking up in the morning and having to go to the gym when you're when you're you know not a morning person you know, it's, it's one of those things that it takes me time. It took my, my mind time to get used to it. Now I, I love going to the gym, yeah. except legs, legs day. Sometimes I don't feel like it, but, <laughs> but the rest of the days I feel good, <laughs> but, but every other, I mean, but I, I enjoy going to the gym. I love going to the gym. I love the feeling there. I love accomplishing it. I love the battle with myself. I love all those components. And it's, 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 it's addicting in, in many cases because like, you know, sometimes where, especially on the weekends where I don't have anything going on, if my kids don't have sports or whatever, I'll sometimes spend three, three and a half hours in the gym lifting just for fun yeah. because I'm having a good time. I'm figuring new things out. I'm trying a different lift. I'm watching a YouTube clip or video, you know, something, and I just have a good time with it, right? Yes. And you know, I think that's the thing. It's a hobby than it is anything else nowadays, right? Yeah. No, but you, one thing that you said that is very important, um, mainly for new lifters, is uh, mind and body connection because... For example, recently with my when I ruptured my triceps and I had a surgery, and I'm recovering, and now I'm like, okay, my left arm clearly is bigger than my right because of the atrophy, um, and um, I started my my doctor gave me thumbs up to exercise, and I started using more and more occlusion training just to get the pump, and it was magical because the volume came back so faster. We using very low weight. Like I was doing curls uh, with ten pounds, but with the occlusion, yep. the the pump, oh, sucks. yeah, the pump was there. So you really don't need yeah. to lift crazy to get the pump. And, and because a lot of people that are lifting in the beginning, they like to to lift heavy, and sometimes they compromise form, and that's yep. really bad. That's why people get injury because they are ego lifting and, and that's that's dangerous you really need to, to to be careful with that you can't i can't emphasize that enough you know the the if you're just getting into resistance training um the most important piece is to get the form down and technique down properly and to understand why that movement is there and designed for it 
and getting people to check it. You know, I, um, I think one of the big stigmas for a lot of people, and it was for me too, is that, you know, you always have like these gym bros that are super egotistical and super, you know, like, you know, super advanced. You're never going to help somebody. I, what I found is exactly the opposite. You know, everybody I know at the gym is super helpful. Everybody that I know that is, you know, really good at what they do, they, they, they want to help. Like you can go to anybody in a gym and find the biggest, largest, massive guy in the gym. He's going to be the biggest teddy bear you ever meet in your entire <laughs> life. And that guy is going to help you. He's going to sit there with you for another hour and just talk your ear off, yeah. you know, about what you can do the best way. Right. But, you know, form is so important as you're going and doing this. And, you know, that's why when I, when I first started off with Ben, um, you know, I was Eagle lifting, I was grabbing a ton of weight and I was trying to lift and he's like, you know, no, knock off, you know, 50 pounds or a hundred pounds and start doing it this way. You know, you know, getting three is not going to do any good. And there's, there's so much, uh, in, into what you said about, you know, inclusion training and rep ranges and, and things like that around, you know, short twitch fibers and fast twitch fibers in your, in your muscles and strength and endurance, you know, muscle size and hypertrophy, you know, it's, it's cool to play with all of that in your muscles. And it's cause I, I do, you know, BFRs, blood flow restriction or inclusion training as well. And uh, I love it because, you know, it's for one, it's, it's very humbling because you're literally only putting 10 pounds into place <laughs> yeah. and it's the most painful thing you've ever done yeah. in your entire life because your muscles working like 7,000 times harder. And you feel crappy um, because there's only 10 pounds. Like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah. Like what? I got to go get the fifties there. That's not going to work. But you know, um, it's, it, you know, but it's, it's one of those things where, you know, you, you have an understanding of your body and how it works and how it operates and the movements and you're doing things the right way. Like my deadlifts. I rarely do one RMs nowadays anymore. Like I just, I, there's no reason for me to try to max out, you know, my, my lifts. Now, if I'm Eagle lifting, I've tried, you know, and I, I you know, I'll do it one time cause I th I'm feeling like really saucy. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling really good. I'm okay. I'm just going to do it. Yeah, right. Yeah. But for the most part, I'm, I'm trying to stay in the, you know, eight to 12 rep range, you know, eight to 15, eight to 20, you know, it, it's, 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 you know, uh, fun to be able to play with different numbers and how your body feels and how you grow your muscles. But, you know, form is so important so you don't have injuries. And I actually build my gym. So I have a, you know, I publish pictures of my gym. Yeah, I have a really nice gym in my basement. Amazing. <laughs> is it, is it yeah, your gym in your house or at work? So I have a gym at the office, uh, but the ones I post pictures on are the gym in my house. And it's, um, so we, we built a, a attachment under our house. It's just a garage because um, we have uh, more kids, uh, you know, kids with cars and everything else. So it's not attached to the house. But underneath it, in the basement of that that garage, I built the gym out. So it's like an open space because um, it's on a hill. So I basically built it on, on the hill. Uh, it's just an open space that's, that I built into my gym. So it's right next to my house. I basically just walk, you know, five feet out to the garage, walk down some steps, which really sucks on legs day, and then go inside the the gym. And it's it's all right there for me. But a lot of sorry for the dogs. It's beautiful, um, man. Uh, it's, it looks so professional. Yeah. You've really put a lot of work on that gym because it looks beautiful. Yeah, the um, the thing that I, I do with everything on my gym is I work around things that I know that I have injuries on or reoccurring injuries on. So, for example, my left shoulder has always been problematic for me to do barbell uh, to do barbell bench. I don't do any barbell benches anymore at all ever. Um, I'll use a kabuki bar, which is more of a neutral grip, mm -hmm. and it locks my shoulders into place. And and it's an eagle lift because it drops your your bench down probably fifty percent. Um, because you don't have your shoulders basically anymore doing, you know, a large amount of the work, you know, you're basically just hitting triceps and chest and primarily chest. So, you know, I, I haven't had an injury on that since I switched to my Kabuki camber bar. Um, same thing for when I'm doing, you know, deadlifts, I use a wagon wheel, uh, which is similar to like a block pool mm -hmm. so that I can maintain neutral spine cause I'm so tall. Um, so it, it alleviates, you know, the, the lower back muscles as I'm starting to lift, you know, my, and my spinal rectors as I'm starting to go up. So, you know, there's, there's things that we can do to work around our elements too. You know, once you start to get kind of into this, to to make sure that you don't re-injure yourself, and I've been really knock on wood, very fortunate. I haven't had an injury in over a year, which has been great. But have you had one before lifting? The shoulder, the shoulder injury is what I. But had it was I it was lifting. Oh yes, oh. yeah. Oh so. Oh uh, no, so I I injured it in uh, the the shoulder I injured in Iraq. Oh, okay, so, so you never had any a, injury yeah. lifting. <laughs> no, 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 no. I haven't got an injury directly related to lifting it was a uh, reoccurring ones that i had prior injuries for before in the past yep okay yeah no it's it's very important and, and if you think about longevity having a good form having them uh, uh the know how to contract your muscle it's it's very important a lot of people they there is a difference between lifting weight and contracting the muscle uh, i've seen people doing curls with uh, 100 200 pounds that they are literally just moving weights up and down right but they have zero zero up. zero pump you know yeah 
and that's you know uh for, for me what I, I think i've enjoyed the most is is feeling that 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 muscle you know having to do that work right and wow. and and that was hard for me to develop uh my, i think biceps triceps back were relatively easy for some reason, my chest was hard for me to develop a relationship with. That sounds, <laughs> sounds, sounds weird. You know, my, my chest and I, we, we, we never talked, you know, we didn't have small talk, you know, but, but I, you know, I, you know, I finally have done some really good exercises that, you know, I feel, you know, you know, when it's actually hitting those muscle groups and I, you know, I'm, I'm tacking them in different ways and I enjoy that. And so, you know, that, those, those things where you can angle it out and that's, you know, the heavy part, you know, aspect is you know, for my compound movements, I typically go heavy with, you know, like back squat. Um, you know, uh, uh, and, and, and deadlifts and shoulder presses, but everything else is all lighter weights, higher reps, and really focusing on those, those, those muscle groups. And it's, you know, it's just an awesome thing. I love the feeling. I love, you know, you know, it's funny. Cause like, you know, you, you talk to non lifters and they come up to you like, Hey, you look a lot smaller in person. You're like, well, I, that's for one, that's perfect lighting in the mirror. <laughs> Too, I have a huge pump on you. All the blood is going into my muscles. So yes, I, I wish I could look like that all the time. time exactly. <laughs> Damn it! You know, it's the worst thing you say to me is I look smaller in person. Yeah. You know, but that's fine. that's not something it. good to say for a lifter. That's for sure. Ne <laughs> ne never say that. You look smaller. You know, it's very traumatic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but Dave. Uh, I'm not gonna uh, use a lot of your time anymore. We've been one hour on this. It has been a very great conversation thanks for sharing your story thanks for um not only here on this podcast but uh, uh on social media and be open for that i think that growing up uh, in the it i've been working in it field since 1994 and uh the it industry and uh, later on security the vision I, I i compare this a lot so the vision of the it was if you remember the first jurassic park the it guy remember the first it yeah. guy on jurassic yeah. that was the vision of the it guy eating pizza and getting fat yep. i remember even yep. going to to meetings with managers back in in the 90s and say well if you are in it and you don't spend your night eating pizza you're not in it so th those are th that was the mindset right and then yeah. Yeah. fast forward you saw that movie um hacker i think it's hacker with chris uh oh yes. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and you yeah. A, a whole different persona of a cyber security yeah. guy yeah. <laughs> so yeah. the, the times change i think that there is no excuse anymore to not take care of your health i mean we do have uh a lot of uh, infrastructure mainly here in the united states that in gym membership for ten dollars come on i pay ten dollars on my on my gym membership it's ridiculous so i mean anyone can have a membership so go out exercise and and i love that you are leading this by example no and and seriously thank you so much for for having me on and and thank you again too i mean you know what was interesting with all of this is that you know i followed you for a while but you know your journey is is inspirational it's huge i can't believe you went and did bodybuilding it's crazy to me you know like coming from that to this i can never see myself doing it so but but the podcast you know that, that you do the the community outreach that you do as well so i mean i think we're all trying to do the same thing which is share our experiences and help others because we've we figured it out like yeah we finally figured it out it's taken me 40 years but i finally figured it out you know but uh you know i thank you so much for having me on and you know we live in a society that our bodies never had anticipated for, you know, we never thought we'd have the ability to have food at our fingertips by touching a button and having high caloric, you know, low dense foods coming to us that we can literally eat, you know, a massive amounts of food on, you know, our bodies were designed to forge for food, to fight for food, to kill for food um, and to be hungry. And now that we have this thing, you know, where we have all this food that's engineered to be high calories and to make our taste buds just, you know, like, you know, be amazing and have this be the most amazing thing you've ever touched before is, is now here. So our bodies don't know how to handle that, but yet we have the tools necessary and the data and the science to really fix that. So I think, you know, we all play a role in this and sharing our experiences. And the more that we can get out there to talk to people and to reach out to people, not just in security, IT, but you know, as we know, obesity is one of the largest pandemics that we have here in the United States and across the world. Uh, it's horrible, you know, cardiovascular disease, mm -hmm. you know, cancer risks, everything goes up, right? You know, mor mor mortality rate uh, significantly decreases, you know, so, you know, if you want to live longer, you want to have more energy, you want to feel better your whole life, these are things that we can do to, to do that. And so thank you for, for 
I mean, you've been doing this longer than I have, uh, the podcast and, uh, you know, getting the knowledge and information out there and what you've been doing. And um, so I really appreciate everything you do. So thanks again for, for really having me on. Absolutely, really my here. friend. Thank you very much. And uh, I hope to continue to see your journey uh, getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> Sounds good. I can't wait. <laughs> and when I, see, when I see you next time, I'm like, dude, you look bigger in person. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you for your audience. Stay tuned. We have much more to come. See you next time.